Less ugly, not more beautiful. Less ugly. Okay. You're going to make me less ugly I'm too? Make, I'm going to make you look good. Mm -hmm. So listen, David, we're going to, we're going to, we are on our fifth day of our interview. Uh, it is the 18th of December, 2014, and we're in Krauss Mariau at David Tepperson's house. And this is our last meeting. We are going to talk about Why the, the last meeting. We are going to talk I refuse to meet you again. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about the, your experiences in the Yom Kippur War, and then we're going to go downstairs to your Mahal Museum and take out some artifacts and talk about them. Uh, but before that, I want I would like to talk about your birthday. The sixth of October. Your forty seventh birthday. Do you remember your forty seventh birthday? Give me a, give a quick cup, otherwise I've got to work it out. Okay. The 6th of October, 1973 was my 47th birthday. And I was, as, and as always, I fast on Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. My wife had prepared a birthday cake for me that we were to have eaten after I broke the 24-hour fast in the evening. At 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, which was Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish religion, my brigade commander called me. I had to take my equipment, get into my car, pick up officers of the brigade that lived in my area, and get to the Rafiach, and get to Rafiach, our army camp in, on the Sinai border. The Egyptians were on the move. The Israeli army had started mobilizing, and we heard the Egyptians and the Syrians were massing forces along the borders. They also had the backing of the armies of Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, and Iraq. What do you remember of the days a little bit before the Yom Kippur War? Because there was a lot of, I know that you're in civilian life, but you're still connected very strongly to the army. There were a lot of rumors going on that there was things happening, but nothing was really, the Israelis weren't doing anything. Do you, thank you so much. I rang my unit. Automatically, I rang. anything moving, what I, mean. I prepared my kit, I was always prepared. So I didn't, uh, all, the, all, all they had to do in Israel, is to push a button, and within 12 hours, you can mobilize 400,000 boys. That's the power of Israel. We could mobilize, and these were veterans. They weren't just little school boys. These were boys that had fought in a couple of wars, and knew their way around. We were veterans. I had the problem that all the youngsters wanted to go with me because I was a veteran. Do you remember the Yom Kippur War? Of course. What do you mean, do you remember? I've got to sit down and think about it. I understand, that's why I'm here and that's why I'm... That's I'm, right. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm but uh, you've got the, uh, what I wrote there gives you the background. Right, but I want you to try and get it out of you verbally because that's why we're filming on Read what you've got there. Well, I want to know, I want to I want to try and remember, I want to try and get... Pick it my to brain. Your, to pick your brain. And that's why I read you this passage of what you wrote. I wanted to see if it brings any memories to, to you. Now, when you're uh, 47 years old, both of your sons are also in the army. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. What kind of units are your sons in? Infantry. Infantry. My one son was in uh, uh, supply, supplies. Tachzuka. Tachzuka. And the other son, was in infantry. Do you remember which, uh, which unit? Golani? Na, he was in one of these uh, uh, Nakhal units of 900 and something, maybe. They ran around. Teisha Shalosh Echad, Teisha Shalosh Echad. Oh, that's all Nakhal, the Nakhal. Yeah, I was in Nakhal too. Yeah, so they were all Teisha. Okay. And my other son was also Teisha, but being an officer, they took him out and they moved him up front. They moved him uh, into supplies, I think. I looked for, uh, uh, I met my one son down there. I looked for him and I found him. <coughs> I, had, I think I wrote about it. I had yeah, a, you wrote about it and we'll, we'll definitely get to that. I had a, I had a, 
Be, be, being a logistics officer, I moved around a lot. Which, which unit are you in during the Yom Kippur War in your reserves? What, what, what's the name of your unit? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I was with Tachsuka of, of the division. Which division? Khativa? Is it Khativa? Khativa Shalano, yeah, Khativa Sheva. The seventh uh, unit. Sheva, Mazia, ya Miluim Nikim. Yeah. What was your job in the war, in the Yom Kippur War? What, what was your. Tachsuka. Um, what would you call that in English? You were uh, re reinforcements? You took care of all the logistics behind like, I, at the front I line. was logistics officer. Okay. And I ran the supplies and I ran the gauntlets. I, I ran the Suez Canal. I with supplies I traveled at night. We had a tank here. I had, I, I had our system that I supplied. Everyone was in trenches and watched them and I'd supply them with uh, Food, water. I even built up with my. I had a truck, and I was that, and I went ran the gauntlet because the minute they hear me tra traveling, they would open fire. Oops, someone's arrived. Who's come? An Annabel. Annabel. Who came? Arina. Um. You know Rina, you met her. Yes, yes, of course. Um, Annabel, I need, excuse me, I need a cup of coffee. You have a cup of coffee right here. Oh, oh, I didn't see it. Right here. There you go, sir. Thank you. You got it. Uh, Annabel. And here's some cookies. There you go. Thank you. Do you remember the surprise of the war, of the Yom Kippur War? Do you remember how... I mean, it landed on, I, I of course wasn't born at the time, and I don't know, but from what I read, it was a big surprise, this attack from the Egyptians and the Syrians. Do you remember that surprise? Do you remember that feeling or not? When, when you sit in the Israeli, in the army, you know, you don't, you love these surprises, you don't you? You live with Do you remember do you remember on Yom Kippur giving your wife a kiss goodbye and saying see you see you later boom I'm going Do you remember that moment on your birthday no you don't remember that moment Not at all Excuse me madam are you looking for someone Hello How you Rina Let's continue oh. let's continue Excuse me Yes I've got to I accept know. the ladies of the oh, I know. Otherwise to So from your house in um, Kfar Shmayao, you, you round up your, the officers in your unit and you head down to Rafiach. Is that where your, uh, your um, reserve base is? No. Okay. That's where my unit was. That's where your unit They was. put us on Vadi Be'er Sheva. They made us dig, dig, dig in. The Egyptians were mobilizing. So this, we, is, this is 73. The, the Yom Kippur War, is that correct? That's right. Again, you're in Wadi Be'er Sheva? Because you were in Wadi Be'er Sheva in 67 as well. That's right. Okay. Wadi Be'er Sheva, the whole Negev, how big it was. Yeah. So along Wadi Be'er Sheva, we dug in to accept the, the, the Egyptian attack that we expected. And reaching the camp in Rafia, uh, on the Sinai Israeli border around 12 noon, I parked my private car and gave the keys to, to the duty sergeant That's right. who remained at the camp. That's right. He, he, he was, he was a, a, a permanent officer in, in, in Keva, the officer in charge of the camp. And, and we were all mobilized, so he stayed. They, they, we were mobilized and uh, they stayed. And he, we left his car, the, the car, then my wife came down afterwards with, with a friend to take the car home. As the number two logistics officer, I started organizing the needs of our unit, like clothing, food, weapons, ammunition, and fuel. The first reservists who were mobilized belonging to the tank battalions were organized into company groups of 10 and 12 tanks. We supplied, we supplied them 
We supplied them with ammunition, fuel, and other supplies they required and sent them traveling down on their tracks all the way to the Suez Canal, which was over 200 kilometers away. We didn't have, we didn't have transport. We didn't have um, to, uh, tank, uh, uh, tank carriers, you know what I mean? So the tanks went down on their tracks. Yes, they. But doesn't that, it takes it much longer, no? The, we didn't have the facility of a tank carrier to put them on. And we didn't have the railway line to put them on. So they went down on their tracks to go and, and after traveling all that way down, they went to action. The AMX, you know the AMX tank? It's a 13-year-old tank, but it traveled very fast. You could travel 100 kilometers an hour with it. Wow. 90, wow. 90 they traveled like hell. And but, your job? But, but, the big, but the old Shermans that we, of course. we, we had, Patterns and Shermans, they travel slowly. But your job at the at the like even before the war breaks out, your your job is to get these tanks supplied and on their way. Is that That's correct? Right. That's right. Okay. I okay. sent them down in groups of ten and twelve tanks each and columns. Uh, my biggest problem was getting clothing, boots, guns, and other equipment for for one of our armored infantry battalions that had been doing their thirty day reserves duty. Before they were, uh, before they the came war back and their clothing went to Washington, and then they were mobilized before they got out. So now I had no clothing for them. Because you know, now Machsanechirum, you know the way they are. They got all the clothing in your bag and your kit bag and everything ready for you. But if you use it, you go, we got to rebuild it. So I didn't have, so I had to rebuild it. So I got, I got the Dodot. You remember the, the old ladies that came and worked? And made uh, and ma in, in the army camps, they packed the chavilot. the chavilot of, uh, with a kit bag, and they put the helmets in and everything. They packed the kit bags, they put your name on it. And these were old ladies, uh, reserve ladies, we used to call them. The, do the, do the dollar or the daughter, daughters. All the aunts. Okay. They were volunteers. Yeah. Um, the the brigade the the brigade the brigade uh, headquarters had moved out of the left left uh, wait a second vehicles this is transport no what did you find Just, I did. huh you got educated what? you got more educated yeah yeah okay sit down or over there and let's we got what do you want to uh, what do you want to drink some sprite so uh, ask Annabelle if you can have some sprite Annabelle. Okay, David, let's, let's, let's finish this up. We arrived at the camp called Bazula Baluza. Baluza. Baluza, which was the headquarters for the northern Baluza. part of the of 10 kilometers from the, from the Suez Canal. I tried. Baluza was a, was a big British army camp from the old days. It was an Air Force camp. Up. Yeah, yes. yeah, I'm just trying to think. Belusa, that's right, it's an army camp. Uh, and uh, going towards Suez Canal, we passed Belusa. <laughs> yeah, it says that Belusa was 10 kilometers from the canal itself. That's right. So when you get to Belusa, that's where you make your headquarters. So you're right on the front No, line. Not, not, no this, this is where we had an attack. The Egyptians counterattacked with Aleph Aleph. I wrote about the attack. We lost 25 boys there. They attacked us. You got that whole thing there, right? They counterattacked with Aleph Aleph, and we couldn't What's see. Aleph Aleph? Aleph Aleph's night visions. We didn't have them. They did. So if they could see us, we couldn't see them. Okay. My brigade was given the task of holding the northern part of the canal, running from the Budapest stronghold Budapest. along the seafront. Explain to me what Budapest Budapest is one of the strongholds. Each stronghold had a name. There was Budapest, I'm trying to think of all the other names. There were, there were 12 names. And these were, these were ta, uh, ta, uh, ta, uh, ta, uh, ta, 
what do they call this? M, M dodge hole there, no? Uh, that speed? Huh? That speed? No, 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 no. They were M dot. We had the front line ones and we had five kilometers back the next one. Okay. It was the front line battle line. Yeah, on the Suez Canal. Yeah, on yeah. the Suez Canal. So Budapest was one of these reinforcements. One of the reinforcements. Like one of these. Uh, 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 we, 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 and we had two old Stalin tanks we had stuck there. That now, closed the entrance. Why was it called Budapest? Do you know? All the, the whole names were called all type of Budapest and uh, different names of different cities and places. Each Tarzuka, each Taos, Taos, that's the name I'm looking for. Each okay. Taos. Huh? Maos. Okay. We call them Taos. Okay. Okay. It says here, Budapest was one of the fortified strongholds built on our side of the Suez Canal. There were approximately 20 to 30 such fortifications forming the Barlev line. line. So Budapest is located, I believe, on the northern part of the Suez Canal. That's right. Near Port Said and kind of in that in that area, up 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 on the top. Do you remember? Do you remember any of the? There was a lot of, and I'm asking you this: if in the first days of those of, of the war, there was a lot of balagan, of uh, not being properly prepared. Um, do you remember any of this? I mean, it took the Israelis about a week, oh, ten to ten days, to get their SHIT together. 11, I lost eleven kilos. Why? Within a, a week, I'd lost eleven kilos. I didn't have time to sleep. What's them? The balagan was great, and the Egyptians had attacked us, and what they. And we were rebounding from the... From their counterattack. We their counter attack. It took Israel a while to counterattack. Yeah. And, and I was running the gauntlet. Because I was going from, ta from tank to tank, from Emda to Emda. The Egyptians were a fortune of, of, of people. And they were digging in the sand and for I had... I had Mdot where we had two, three soldiers with one tank holding the, the line and the Egyptians were digging. What were they doing? They had so many men, they were creaking in the sand dunes forward. They were moving forward in the sand dunes toward our positions. They, because the, the officers were do, do something, you know, they, they're creaking towards us, they're digging. We could hear them digging, coming towards us. We shelled them afterwards and stopped them. It says here, during the first six days of the war, I lost 11 kilograms, kilograms. in weight. And I, and I di don't think I slept more than 12 or 14 hours in that whole period. I said Whenever it. I had the opportunity, I would fall asleep for an hour or so. And then bong one bullet and I'd be awake as if I hadn't slept for days. It was intense. It was intense. That's the way it was. Yeah. Boom goes and you pew, 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 you know, you're wide awake. Yeah. And, and of course, you have your, what do you, what you have called, not your, uh, uh, your conscience. You fall asleep for a couple of minutes, you wake up and you're wide awake. I had situations where some of the officers that were with me in our unit in the Six Day War and had gone to America in order to continue their studies or to live came rolling up in civilian clothing to my headquarters. We had, we had supplied them with uniforms and weapons if, if possible. We had come, who had come straight from the airport and, and found out... <laughs> The boys came flying in from all over the world as soon as they ha heard the news of the, of the pending war. This is typical of Israeli uh, camaraderie. Um, some of them had not been in Israel for many years 
and with two or three days of their arrival, were already becoming casualties of war. That's right. What happened? The minute we're in trouble, Israelis, the Hevra, been 10 years in America with them. They paid their troops and they came Efra Hevra, Efra Hevra. They came to me looking for uniforms. And I sent them off to the front. Some of them haven't driven the tank. I had one Frenchman, he was an ambulance, a, a tank ambulance driver. He was wounded afterwards. But he came straight from Paris, a real French, a Moroccan Frenchman. You know, you know that all the, all the all Israeli Frenchmen are Moroccans. By the way, do you know that the difference between Moroccan and Algiers? If you were born in Algiers, you got a French passport. Algiers was the same as being born in Paris. If you were born in Morocco, that's the time. Casablanca. The next day, I brought up a tractor to bury the Egyptian dead and collect the weapons they had left behind. There were dead Egyptians floating in the sea as well as in the salt. This is at Budapest. There was a big battle at, at, the, at Budapest. Were you, were you at that, that battle? Yes. I want you to, to tell me what you remember from that battle. Because My the, main the job. Egyptians tried to take it many times. That's right. But Budapest was built facing the Egyptian, the, the Suez Canal, like this. The back was minefields all the way along, yep. and a, a corridor going in. On the, both sides of that corridor, we had two tanks. The tanks were there, and I, my big main job, I was supply officer of the whole line. And I used to run the gauntlet. I, I had it all built up. I had one truck, truck with food closing and what's them, and I had another truck with fuel, and I had another truck with water. And I would run the gauntlet with my trucks, and they'd shell us every time I, I ran the gauntlet to supply every MDA. Every, there was one tank or two tanks together with a couple of soldiers, I had to supply them. And I was getting all the shilling. The they, they, they would hear me going, they could hear the motors. Do you remember Budapest though? Do you yes. remember, what do you remember about Budapest, specifically about Budapest? Being shilled, a lot. Budapest was covered, they built Budapest on the railway line that they dismantled. They took the rails and, and built the, the M dot mm -hmm. on Budapest. It was built by these Israelis, the Israelis built it. Wasn't Budapest one of the, o the only fortification points that wasn't captured by the Egyptians in 73? That's right. Isn't That's that correct? Right. Yes. The Egyptians tried to cake it, they came a couple of times. A couple of times. And they came through the back. I buried it. I had there a position where I'm talking to the Egyptians on, they had these towers that they spot with us. And when I was running the gauntlet, after the, their commandos came and tried to take the place, I went to bury them. Bury who? The dead Egyptians lying all over the place. So I made... Any mass graves? Firstly, I had to contact the Egyptians on the spot and show them that I'm burying their people. I did it all by hand and they stopped fighting at me. Otherwise, they were shooting at me all the time when I showed them I'm burying their dead. How did you, how did you get in contact with them? Hands. Hands. How, how far were they from you? 200 meters? A kilometer. Meters? Less than a kilometer. Less. Yes. They could see me pretty well. I could see them. And you were... And I would go there and show them I'm digging. And I'd come with a tractor, I'd dig a hole and put the bodies in. I had one Egyptian that was shot in the backside. <clears throat> I lay him across the top of my jeep because he couldn't sit. 
He had, he had shrapnel in his tuchus. So we, we laid him upside down. Was he dead? No, he had he shrapnel lied. in his tuchus, but he couldn't sit. So what did you do with him? We took him to, to, to first aid. We took him to first aid. We treated him well. I, I was on the canal and I sent back, I didn't know what to do with all of I sent back literally thousands of prisoners of war. I think I wrote about it. One day, our supply camp was attacked by three Egyptian airplanes. That's right. One of our trucks and two of our soldiers were killed. That's right. They were too old reserve. Well, before, they could, before they could do more damage, two Israeli planes attacked them, and we saw one of the Egyptian planes. Shot fall. down. Where, this was Budapest also, or this was after? This was all around, the whole area there was under attack all the time. Yeah. That's what I saw a lot of action. In Yom Kippur? In all the wars, yeah. but Yom Kippur, I, I tell you, Yom Kippur I lost 11 kilos chick chuck. Boom. Best diet you ever had. Huh? Best diet. Best diet ever had. I was at our army headquarters bunkers in Baluza at night when suddenly I saw a car approaching with the headlights on, coming into our, our perimeter, coming into our perimeter. Who do you think it was? I'm, do you, who was it? You tell me. I, I, if you tell me, that saves me a lot of reading. Who was it? Ralph Kana, you remember? This was, yes. Tell me, tell me the story. Rav Kahana. No, don't, I know Rav Kahana. You tell me about what happened here. Yeah, that, they, Rav Kahana. They come down there. Not, not him himself. Me, no. no. Not him himself. No, Americans. Okay. Typical Americans with short pants and we come to fight. I said, we got guns. No. Give us guns, we came to fight. I said, what do you know about the war? He said, you know that if you get wounded, I've got to take six soldiers to carry you. So get the hell out. I kicked them out there. They, they were looking for glory, but they didn't want to get into action. The first shell that fell down hand like hell. <laughs> These people were from uh, Kahana's movement, the, the JDL. That's Jewish, it. The Jewish Defense League. That's right. And they came. Big fighters, big fighters. Oh, they got to kick the wall. Give us guns. I said, what do you know to shoot guns? I said, if you get wounded, who carries you? How many were they? Uh, four, or five? Uh, four, five, six. So what happened with them at the end? I kicked them out. I, I gave them time. First year they had the first shells for them. They shut their pants and they ran like hell. Did they? Nice American New York boys that came to see the glory. You know what I mean? The glory. I, I, I was there. You know how many people... I had a problem. The Israelis started collecting packets and watching. I was in charge. Of, of that whole area in Sinai, and you had these truck carloads of civilians from Tel Aviv, my brother-in-law included. They weren't in the army; they weren't there, but they they were they wanted part of the glory. But they didn't realize the headaches they gave us. Can I see these civilians being shelled by the Egyptians? Who's going to deal with them? And they wanted to come down there and. Uh, 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 and uh, with, with goodies, underwears and socks and things like that. I, I, I collected it all afterwards and dished it out. I took it away from them. They wanted to go down to the front line. Yeah. They were all Hebra, Hebra from Tel Aviv that hadn't been in the army. That hadn't been in the army. Mm. Hmm. Hadn't, hadn't been. That hadn't been in the army. That's right. Okay. But they wanted the glory. They wanted the glory. Until the first now, show. Do you remember uh, your, uh, somewhere in, 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 the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Yom Kippur War, you meet your son, Sefi. Can you tell me about that? I went looking for Cause, him. Because you didn't know where he was. I knew more or less. Okay. You, forget, you forget I'm the officer in charge there. And uh, he was an infantry unit, 900 and something, like all the, all the Nachal Nikim. And... Uh, I got to his unit, 
I met him, we, we, we met each other. He, I said, where's your gloves? He said, they got lost, what happened? His half track got a direct hit, his gloves and part of his suit. Was, and I, I gave him new, new clothing, new suit, because I was a logistics officer of the front. So I had everything. <laughs> well, it was a good meeting him. Were you glad to see your son? Yes. There we go, meet your sons there, especially. We hugged each other. It was a nice feeling, I remember that very much. Touch wood, both my sons I met down there. The other one was at the, uh, uh, at the crossing, where we crossed. The Suez Canal. Mm -hmm. He was shelled like hell. Gadi, what did you pack us there? I want you to tell me now, we're going to talk right now about, we're going to go downstairs soon. But before we go downstairs, I want you to tell me what's downstairs and what you've done and how long you've collected all these things for and what kind of documents you have. Tell me what we have downstairs. I've got to switch on and switch off to think. Okay. <laughs> I'm a collector by nature. And all my life I collected and documented. I got the history of Israel downstairs in my, in my own way, all in English. That's why I got a problem. You told me about the museum. I'm looking for somewhere to put it. I got a problem because uh, I spent a lot of money documenting and keeping the stuff I used to take school youngsters to work, I'd pay them 15 shekels an hour, younger boys 10 shekels, and all the stuff that I got downstairs and all the documents and all the muffled boys in English. Which the problem is today, I haven't got where to put it, because all the, in Israel if you go you give it to them it disappears because right. it's English. So I've been looking for a home, this is where I asked you to help me, get a home where I could put this, this material. You've seen the material. What's down there? Huh? What, what kind of things do you have down there? What kind of things are you going to show me now when we go down there? I have a list of all the Machal boys. Besides the list, artifacts. Do you have any artifacts down there? Artifacts is art. I don't maybe not look at it, it's art, but I, I have different weapons, different weapons. Okay. <laughs> Knives. I'm a collector, so I have everything down there. From Zulu shields to Botswana shields. Three different tribes down there, I've got those two. So I collected all these things, I've got a collection down there. I've got a real museum down there. Okay. <coughs> I'm not sneezing. Okay, so we're going to take a little short break, ah. and then we'll go to, we're going to go downstairs. You want a coffee? What did you got there? Are you cold? You look cold. This is my. This is. By the way, well, you might be able to use it. What? You see all these discs? Yep. What are those? That interviews and uh, stories about the group of Omaha. That's my Khati Wat and then you've got the army units, miscalculations. I've got all type of material. Tell me, tell me about this where, this room that we're in right now. What, what, what is it? It's my collection over the years. In English. Of Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Sorry. Okay, we're going to start over again. Tell, tell me, tell me. Uh, this is my collection in English of all the volunteers that came in 1948. It's the only English version. All the rest in Hebrew. Wait a sec, I need you. You're, you're leaning against something here and it's making... Okay, there we go. Okay, tell me again. It, I... Where, where, where are we right now? Where... Wh this where, is my a basement in my house. Yeah. Where I have collected 
the history of Machal in English. It's the only English collection. Everything else is in Hebrew. And I've got nowhere to put it. I'm looking for a home. The main reason I'm looking for a home is that uh, I'll have some, when I'm not here, at least it won't go to waste. I have a lot of material that I put, I've got the names of all the people that came. You've got Finland and what to them. I've got the names of all of them, who they were, where they were, where they came from to fight in 48. When did you start, um, when did you start this process of documenting all these things in? So after 48. After 48. I, I'm a collector, so I started collecting then already. And then I made, uh, I, I put a show and look at all those, you see those there? All those. Where? There are 10, ten there of different units that the Machel fought in. So I made, I made a tarocha for that of Machel. Can you see them? Where are they? They're on the, on the bench there. Mm -hmm. Palmach, look there. In yep. the middle you've got Palmach. Each one is a different unit, there are 10 of them. And I put the picture of the Machel boys. Yeah. You see the pictures? But to move that picture away though, it'll be better. <clears throat> I made this tarocha for the Macha. Do you guys still meet? Hmm? I didn't hear you. Do you guys still meet? We, we meet, we meet, but uh, they, I'm among the youngsters. Are you? Of course. I was only 20 then. Okay. He, most of these boys were World War II veterans. To be World War II veterans, they were well over 20. And you see it's pictures according to the unit. For instance, like the first one there is the is Khativata Negev. You see the, the Negev sign there in the middle? Look. Yeah. The Khativata Negev you got there, it's the brown one. And then you've got the other one next to the 7th Brigade, you see? Yep. Each one of those are different brigades where the Machel served. My problem is, where do I put it now? You know what I mean? You said you'd find me something? I'll try. It's a pity it goes to waste. Do you have all of your military ranks down here? Mm -hmm. Your military ranks. Your military ranks. Today? You, do you have it down here? I'm a colonel. What do you mean that rank? Do you have your ranks? Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. My uniform. You want my uniform? What's that? My uniform. It's upstairs. You want to see my uniform? Hold on. With all the ranks on it? Sure. Oh? Sure. And what else do we have down here in the museum, in this museum? I see all these, th all, what are, what are all, all these things behind you? Look, it's written on each one. It's written on each one. Which country they came from? Can you do me a favor? Can you go up and get my phone from the, it's on the table? Thanks. Yeah? If you look at each one, it's got what's written. <clears throat> open up and have a look and see. Well, you could ask me, look at that, you see? 72nd, 79th Battalion, 72nd, 72nd. Then I've got, yeah, Machal Army, or dead. What's or dead? Khativat or dead? Or dead. Khativat Yiftach, Khativat Har El, Palmach. Palmach HaNegib, Palmach HaNegib. And what's in their names? Huh? Names of the people yeah. that were in there? Take one out and have a look. If you take one out, you'll see. What if I take one out for you and you show me? Let's take out... 
Hundred you protect my be good if you Yeah, take the other one out. This one is ugly stories, I can't show you anything. The pictures. I only got two pictures here, look. Don't show them. What's that? I've only got two pictures here. Khati, what the nigga nine battalion? What kind of stuff is in there though? Like what kind of what kind of documents? It doesn't have to be pictures. I just want to know. Yeah, look, you can yeah. see. Well tell me. I I'm filming you. I can't look right now. You got a list of the boys that came here from Machal. Machal overseas volunteers. That's what all these these files are. Harvey Sorolnikov, he was a Canadian that came here. Jeepnik, he was with me in the Jeeps. Harvey Sorolnikov. Now look at this picture. You know what the goal was? Look at this picture. Flip it over for me? So mm -hmm. I can flip it over for me so I can see with the camera? Okay. That's Harvey Saronic of the Canadian. Albert. Albert was the Frenchman. That fought in the Foreign Legion. There's Mota, Mota Gour on the bottom? Mota Gour, yeah. It's Owen Cohn. These are all South Africans. One, two, three, four South Africans here. That's a South African too. Are you, you're not in this picture though, are you? No. No. Maybe you took the picture. I didn't take the pictures someone else took because I collected pictures. I was a collector. What else? I see more pictures in there. Hmm? There's Mot more pictures. Mot 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 yeah. More pictures. There's more pictures in there. Yes. This is most of the material. The pictures in the other one. This is documents. Overseas documents. So tell, which one should I take? Which one has more pictures? The other. Ah, here. Yeah, yeah, it says so. A negative. What about the negative? This has... The pictures up there. But this is Mahal pictures, Yiftah. Yeah. yeah. You're not Yiftah. No. Parel. No, I know the two. Not. Negative. Dut Hamish, Moni Bishtaim, Ta Ta Ta, Mahal. These are my Udat pictures. These are my Udat. Which one should I take? All of them. Let's take those Beriakov, Operation Yoav, Operation Ovda, Telnov Brigade, Parade. That's all, all, all the 12. Okay. Huh? Yeah, look at Good pictures there. Tons of pictures. Oh, no. Well, I am. Um, this shows our battles. Look. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, are you part of it? Okay. That's me, yeah, that's a, that's our Jeep program in Egypt. That's Barlev. Yeah. Barlev. Yeah, and? He's a battalion commander. Yeah, hold it more like this for me. Okay, there you go. That's you, that's Chaim Barlev. Mm -hmm. Was he a good commander? Of course. The best. He was a Palmachnik, no. That's Micha Peri, he's number two. I'm E. Kogan. I met my wife through this character. These are South African Machel volunteers. We had these hats that they gave us, they called the Yiddish Keppelmacher. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me move away. The Yiddish Keppelmacher. Mm -hmm. Who's that? What's that? My tongue. He, he, he was, I was driving a Jeep, and he, I took the picture. 
נגד ברגדיה. ואת אריה, אריה הוא היה קשר. הוא היה אנגלישי, אבל הוא היה היברו. זאת אומרת, הוא היה קשר. זה כל אלג'יפסק. אני מתבקר. אני מתבקר עם היד. The last Jeep there is mine. He's See if you, t I want you to find a picture of you. I want you to show me a picture of you here. There I am. I'm here too. You know who that is? I'm by left, a brigade commander above me. Jaime Kurgan, these Michael volunteers, or whatever, that's Chief of Staff, Major by left. And I'm standing talking. Yeah. Okay. That's my brigade commander. Who's in that case? Where? Yeah. Where? Okay. Now come through the gear. That's supposed to be me. Is it? It is me. With the mustache? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is a captured Egyptian vehicle. This is a... Kornup. You know where Kornup is? That's Kornup when we captured it. It was the, the captain, the Egyptians were there. So I put our jeep in. We took up firing positions and we, these are the jeeps charging and the Egyptians ran away down the back. The whole bunch, the whole Makla car. Malaya okay. Kablim. Yeah. You know where that is? That's going down, opening the road. Okay, we're good. Mm -hmm. We're good.